All right, so first off, apologies about the, the mess of hair, beard, all that stuff. Uh, quarantine, you know? What can you do? Well, I guess I could shave my face and then cut my own hair. But you know what? I'm not worried about that right now. Also, don't worry. In a future video, I will be covering up this window so that it's all dark in here and it looks cooler. And you can actually kind of see the light back there because right now, you really can't. But that's all besides the point because I want to talk about YouTube and I want to talk about people clicking on your videos. How do you get them to click on your videos? Well, uh, one of the first things that's really important when it comes to creating a YouTube video is creating an engaging thumbnail. Your thumbnail and your title on your video are really the two main things that are going to drive people to click on your video. If any of you guys are into email marketing, you know that the subject line of an email is going to determine the click-through rate for that email. And it's the same story when it comes to YouTube. Your thumbnail and your title are sort of the subject line of your video. So they have to convey what the video is about and it has to be engaging and interesting enough for the user to actually click on it. So in this video, we'll be doing a couple of things. First off, I'll go through my process for creating thumbnails and we'll actually create a thumbnail for this video itself. And second off, I'll be showing you some free tools uh, that you can make thumbnails with super easily. And the third thing I'll be showing you is how to tell if your thumbnail is actually working in YouTube Analytics. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so first off, before we get into this, uh, if you guys have any questions about this video or any other videos I make, you know, feel free to go catch me over on twitch.tv slash the real spoons. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday night. Link is down in the description below. Okay, and before we head over to the computer screen here so I can show you guys how exactly I make these thumbnails, there are kind of two concepts that I always think about when I'm making a thumbnail. The first thing is, is that I want my thumbnail to provide information to the viewer, even though they're technically not a viewer yet, but I still want to provide information that sort of accompanies the title. I don't want it to exactly repeat what's in the title, but I want it to just provide information. I don't, don't want it to just be, you know, uh, something that just looks cool or anything like that. I just want it to provide information to the user. Uh, and the second thing is that if there's text on the thumbnail, there doesn't always have to be, but if there is, I want it to be easy to read. I want to have, you know, three or four words max. Uh, honestly, I just try to keep it at maybe two or three. Uh, and honestly, like I said, it doesn't really need to have text. Uh, there's a lot of information you can just convey by using images. And we'll get into that in just a second here once I hop over the computer screen. But I just wanted to make sure that I just stated those two concepts because honestly, that's something I think about. If there's anything else that you guys specifically do for your thumbnails, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Um, but let's hop over the computer now and I'll show you guys exactly how I make thumbnails. Okay, folks, so first off, let's go over some of the tools that you can use to create a thumbnail. Uh, I'm going to be using Affinity Designer, uh, and I'll put a link to that down to this program below. It's a $50 program. There is a trial for it as well. It's really great. I've, uh, I've used Photoshop for a really long time, and I recently switched over about a month ago using Affinity Designer. And it's really been fantastic, and I'm still learning it, but uh, I've really enjoyed using it. And it's $50 for life, so you, there's no monthly subscription or anything like that. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really think it's a great program, so definitely check it out. Um, but if you don't have the cash for it, there are some free options that I will give you right here. Um, so PhotoP. PhotoP.com is a really great website. It's an online browser-based, um, basically a Photoshop, and you can basically do everything you know, in Photoshop uh, to create it that you would do to create a thumbnail in PhotoP. So you can just click File New. You can set, you know, 1920 by 1080. And it's literally just like using Photoshop. So uh, I'm sure it doesn't have all the features of Photoshop, but it's got all the basic ones that you would need in order to create a, uh, a great thumbnail. It also is ad supported. And I believe there is a, uh, there is a, paid plan for PhotoP, but I have not looked into that too much. Now, the third option here is also a free option. It is a great thumbnail generator from Nerd or Die. This one is less flexible than the other two options I just listed. Um, and obviously, you can use Photoshop if you would like to as well. I'm not saying don't use Photoshop, but the ones that I've listed, uh, this is kind of a more basic um, thumbnail generator. You can drop an image in here, and then it will allow you to 
uh, go ahead and add text to the image and I believe adjust the overlay uh, that the image has and things like that. So uh, I'll link all these tools down below. Definitely go check them out. Uh, and I, like I said, I'll be using Affinity Designer for this. So apologies if you guys don't have Affinity Designer, but like I said, there is a seven day free trial. Feel free to sign up for that if you want to follow along with me. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna create a brand new document here. I'm gonna go File, New, and I'm gonna set the page width to 1920 by 1080. And we have it set to the web type. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I also like having a transparent background. So it's gonna go ahead and create the canvas for us right now. Uh, it takes, for some reason on my computer sometimes, it just takes a little bit to actually create it. So there we go, beautiful. We got the canvas right here. Uh, and the first thing I really like to do is I like to decide on a background color. So since this video is gonna be talking about YouTube and YouTube thumbnails and things like that, I wanna go ahead and try to use YouTube's reddish color for this, I think. so. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and maybe I'll switch this, you know, at some point, but I'm going to go ahead and just head over to Google and I'm going to type in YouTube hex color. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the hex color. I believe YouTube has a new brighter one. So the hex I believe it's this brighter one right here. So E62117. So I'm going to go ahead and create a background. So head over to fill up in the top left. And then what was that? E62117. That looks like YouTube. All right, cool. So obviously this might be a little shocking, a little too bright, and we can always adjust this in the future if we want to. Um, now, one idea that I did have, which is, might be kind of cool for um, you know creating a YouTube thumbnail, is uh, to kind of have it as a list of videos, and the center one will be kind of like highlighted out. And how I got this idea was I actually just went into Google Images and I just typed in YouTube thumbnail. And I found an image. This is a great way to get inspiration as well. I found this image, which seems really cool. And I like the way this kind of, um, this kind of highlights the center one, but also kind of gives you the idea that this video is in a feed and you need to have an engaging thumbnail in order to have a great, um, you know, have a good click-through rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of, ah, exactly take this idea but I'm gonna be inspired from this idea even though this isn't even like a thumbnail uh, sort of width uh, and height but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of use that idea anyway so uh, what I will do is I'll head over and I'll create another square right here and this one I want it to be let's see you know that that seems like a good width and height so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to white we're probably not gonna leave it as white and I'll go ahead and let's leave it right there. I'm gonna copy this. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've created basically this little sort of, you know, fake thumbnail template and I've copied it on the top and I've copied it down on the bottom and I've lowered the opacity of the top and the bottom one uh, to uh, 40% and then the middle one I have at 100% so it kind of makes this one pop a little bit and it gives sort of the illusion that this is in a feed. Um, so I might make some adjustments to this uh, but this is kind of the basic setup I'm rolling with for right now. So one part about Affinity Designer that I really, really like is that there on the left side here there are uh, a bunch of vector images that just come with Affinity Designer. You, can, you have all these different sets uh, that you can, uh, you can also add more sets if you'd like to. And I really enjoy this because it makes it super easy for kind of creating thumbnails and just creating things in general. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna type in the word image, which is, it's behind my webcam, but there's a little search bar for these. Uh, and as you can see, there's nothing that shows up for game icons, iOS 12, nothing. Uh, there's images here, so we might use one of these. I just wanna take a look at all of them. Foundation icons. Okay, so we'll go to these. We're gonna go ahead. I can just drag this right out and I can make it larger. And I hold shift so that it doesn't lose its aspect ratio. I think that's a little too big. And I can go ahead and maybe make this, uh, maybe this will be too harsh. Uh, make it black with no stroke.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and added in this uh, sort of image graphic to this center one, and I've also added it to the top and bottom uh, sort of fake thumbnails right here, and I've made the opacity of those seven, uh, just to kind of give the more of an illusion that it's a feed. And now it's time to go ahead and add in some text. So I'm gonna head over to the text tool on the left side here, and I'm gonna just stretch out some text here. And it's important to, you know, kind of have, like I said, three or four words that sort of describe the video, um, but don't exactly say what the thumb or what the title is going to say. It's okay if it sort of repeats some of the words, but for me, uh, I think that it works better when there's just two or maybe two or three words uh, that are pretty big on the thumbnail, and then they just describe what the video is about. So let's go ahead and say, I don't know, I'm going to just type in perfect thumbnail i don't know if this is going to work it's a lot of trial and error uh honestly when it comes to this sort of stuff um one thing i do want to do immediately though is i want to switch this font so we have Arial right here i'm going to go ahead and just switch this font and i'm going to just test out a bunch of different fonts that i have uh one of them that i do like a lot is uh montserrat montserrat not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but Montserrat Black, uh, I think is a really good one. And I want to change this uh, font text to white. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just added in the perfect thumbnail and I've made each of these their own layer. Uh, because I made perfect uh, bigger than these other two words right here. Uh, but one thing that I noticed is that the it's just not centered how I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy everything here. But before I do that, let me go ahead and lock uh, the background layer just so I don't accidentally copy that as well. I'm going to copy everything that's here and I'm going to just go ahead and center it just so that looks a little better. Actually, it didn't even copy everything. Uh, let's see, copy everything here and then center it. There we go. Beautiful. So one thing you definitely want to do when it comes to creating a thumbnail is you want to, you know, uh, shrink it to the size of what you would what you would expect on YouTube. If someone looked at a recommended video, is this a good size? And for me right now, I'm seeing that this is not really where I want it to be. Um, so, you know, the word thumbnail and the are just a little too small for me and I just want to make it a little larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just head over here. I'm going to make thumbnail. A bit larger I can even make the I can make it like I can make it bigger than the other two words if I want to and I can do the perfect thumbnail let's see I can even make this the size of perfect if I want and we'll see how does that look does that look kind of ridiculous it might look a little ridiculous I think the is actually a little too big maybe I don't need to yeah, I just make this smaller because I don't care if they see the, I just want them to see perfect and thumbnail. So the perfect thumbnail. So that is probably enough to get someone to click onto the video because they're probably wondering to themselves and hopefully this works because obviously this is, this is thumbnails about this video and hopefully this actually works. Um, they're they're going to be thinking, oh, like, perfect thumbnail i wonder what that could even be you know like how does that even work uh what could it even like it, it adds like a mysterious element to it you know it puts a little mystery on it so hopefully they click on it and there you go then from then on it's about your content alone and if it's going to uh you know get someone to comment get someone to subscribe get someone to enjoy the video um, so I think this is like pretty decent right now. Uh, what I w might want to do is unlock this uh, layer on the bottom, this background layer, and potentially I might want to add a gradient to it. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work well. We'll see. Let's see. Does that, does that make it look worse, better? I kind of like it with the gradient, if I'm being honest. Um, we can just go from this side to that side because it sort of makes the uh, it sort of makes this pop even more because this is a darker background now, but it still leaves a little bit of you know, the bright red on the left side. 
Uh, so I think I really like the way this thumbnail looks right now. It's uh, super simple. And the great part about thumbnails is that you can you can change them over time. I've seen people do that before. Uh, you know, if you see that a thumbnail has kind of used all of its juice and you want to just sort of rejuvenate it and maybe one of your videos recently, recently got linked uh, somewhere and all of a sudden you're getting a little bit more traffic, uh, you might want to update the thumbnail uh, just to kind of rejuvenate the sort of uh, appeal of the video. Um, so yeah, anyway, hopefully uh, this sort of tutorial here sort of helped you out. Uh, you know, like I said, it's good to have about you know two three words maybe four words depending on what your video is about and then i'm using these images on the right here to convey that there's something new here okay so i've actually decided to switch up what that center thumbnail is and i've switched it to this question mark that's within a circle and i think this just adds a little bit more mystery to it and i like it i like it a lot um very simple thumbnail i'm not doing anything crazy here i think uh I think this works well and I like that the question mark actually is differentiate like differentiates itself from the top uh, and top and bottom ones because the top and bottom ones are supposed to be different and the one in the center is supposed to be the one that's like the perfect thumbnail you know um, so I think this is a really great thumbnail hopefully it actually works out let me know you know down in the comments below if, if this actually helped you guys out uh, with clicking on the video because this is going to be on this video and finally the last thing i want to show you guys is exactly how to see if your thumbnails are being effective and this is within the youtube analytics um, sort of dashboard here so if you go to youtube studio and you go to your videos tab here i'm going to just click into one of these videos that seems to be doing pretty well for me i have 1300 views on it uh, i'm going to click in on the analytics button that's right here and i can head over to the reach tab and what this is going to show me on the right here is this sort of funnel. So this says impressions and how they led to watch time. Uh, it says this funnel depicts how many times a thumbnail was shown to viewers on YouTube impressions, how frequently those thumbnails resulted in a view, the click through rate, and how those views ultimately led to watch time. So essentially this is telling you how effective your thumbnail actually is. So this thumbnail for this video, uh, which I did actually tweak a little bit uh, a little later into the video's life cycle, uh, but it had 10.4 thousand uh, impressions and it had a almost a 10 percent click-through rate which for me i feel like that's really great um, because that's telling me that one tenth of the people that saw this video uh, clicked on it and just from the thumbnail and maybe a little bit of the title that they saw it was in, it was interesting enough for them to actually click on it so that's really great and then the watch time from impressions that's also fantastic but honestly these first two metrics that are right here are the really important ones um, so, you know, it says 6.1% from YouTube recommending your comment. Uh, so not all of these are actually just YouTube recommending it. There's different ways that, um, you know, it can, it can be seen. And obviously it just says other right here. So it doesn't exactly tell you that, uh, you know, how it got those impressions. But this is a really powerful part of YouTube analytics that I don't know if a lot of people actually use or know about. Um, but definitely check it out. It's like I said, click on a video, go to the analytics of that video and click on the reach tab and you'll see impressions and how they led to watch time. And this is directly going to tell you how effective your thumbnails are. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you if your thumbnail is underperforming. Uh, it doesn't tell you, you know, how to fix it. It doesn't give you any advice, but hopefully the rest of my video did that for you. Uh, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, you know, I put a great amount of time into this video, especially editing it because I went over a bunch of different concepts and a bunch of different ideas that I wanted to do. And hopefully this came across as a pretty clear and concise video. Um, and like I said, I'm over on twitch.tv every Tuesday and Thursday night. Uh, link is down in the description below. If you guys have any questions about this video, leave a comment below or go catch my stream. I'm happy to help answer questions. Uh, and yeah, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe for more videos, and I'll catch you later. Peace.